friends, we made it. It's a Christmas miracle. To my very first vlog, which is super exciting. My name is Julie, for those of you who don't know me, and I am a super big fan of theme parks. I'm a season pass holder here in Southern California to multiple parks. There's lots of things that I love about theme parks, and I am so excited to share that with you all. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna do some of my favorite things at one of my favorite events. And can anybody tell me where they think we are? Do you see the rainforest? Yeah, there it is. That's right, we are at California Adventure. So we're gonna be going there today for their food and wine festival. If you're not familiar with it, you will be after this video. And if you are familiar with it, hopefully I can give you some new fresh perspectives, some new tips, or just kind of affirm some things that you already know. So let's get started. Side. and one thing that you'll notice about all the decor is there is a ton of 100th anniversary of the Walt Disney Company decor. You'll find it all around the parks, including some of the merch, um, actually a lot of the merch. If you look over here, you can see there's some Oswald merchandise, which I think is really cute. Um, but we're gonna head on over to the pier because that is where all of the food and everything is going to be. And today's kind of cold. And there's also a little bit of a crowd, which is kind of crazy because I'm here super early. Um, I didn't rope drop this morning, which is something that I like to do, but I just didn't have time this morning. <laughs> can see from the sign we have made it to the food and wine festival first thing that we're gonna do today is we are gonna pick up our sip and savor pass which if you're unfamiliar with the sip and savor pass it's a way that you could potentially save money I don't recommend it for every single person I know that sounds really confusing but we'll go ahead and get one right now if you are a magic key holder which is Disney's version of a annual pass holder, you get a discount. So originally it was 59, you get it for a discounted rate at 54. And then in addition to that, you get this cute little lanyard to go along with it that just has the 2023 um, logo for it. And then here is the Sip and Saver Pass, which includes these little tabs on it, which can be redeemed at any of the booths. Now, a couple things to note, first of all, it actually does not cover alcohol. So I know it's kind of lame because it's a food and wine festival, but no alcohol is included, which is fine for me. I'm not really a drinker. I like to try the non-alcoholic, really pretty beverages. Um, and the foods, the food is really good. They're usually snack size portions and you'll see a little bit of that as we go around. The booths actually don't open until 10.30, so we're just gonna wait just a little bit. I might walk around and just see which booths I actually wanna go to. One thing that I actually forgot to mention is that I know I'm a pass holder, so I have the ability to get a discount, but you also get a discount if you are a Disney Visa holder through Chase. So I'm also that as well, but I forgot. I always forget that you get the discount for that as well. Something else that's really important to note about the Sip and Saver Pass is that these tabs that come on them don't want to pull them off. As much as you might be like me, and I'm kind of like weird about the satisfaction of pulling off one of the tabs, do not pull them off before you get up to the actual booth because they will send you to Disney jail. Right to jail. You're playing music too loud, right to jail. I'm just kidding. They're just not gonna probably let you redeem it if you pull it off before you get up to the front. So make sure you take your time, be patient. And the other part about this, because I'm a pass holder so I come often, but even if you're not a pass holder, say you're coming for just a week with your family and you're planning on being at DCA during this time for several days, I would say don't worry about spending all of them in one day. I know a lot of times the pressure is just to eat and drink as much as possible, but we don't really want to overeat. We definitely don't want to overdrink. So I just encourage you to take your time. Use one, I mean, I like to use maybe one or two per time that I come and it's good through the entire festival. It doesn't have to be used all today. You can come back until I think it's April 23rd. I need to double check on that. Um, 
April 25th, it says it right on the Sip and Saver Pass. Until April 25th, you are able to use and redeem any of these. They're not good for any other festival, so take your time. So before it gets super crazy and everything opens at 10.30, I'm just gonna go around to all the booths and kind of give you an idea of where they are. So first one that we're gonna look at is we are going to look at the Peppers Caliente, which it's kind of a pun on Cali, I guess. <laughs> Also, something that is amazing about the Food and Wine Festival that I just love, being a native Californian, I grew up here, I grew up going to Disneyland, and we always had Soren, but the California version, and it only comes back exclusively for the Food and Wine Festival, which is really exciting. So we're gonna do that later today. I'm really looking forward to that. For now, we are going to just enjoy the time, get some food at 10.30. <laughs> They do have these events that are similar to just a normal standard wine tasting, but you can do them at the Sonoma Terrace, which is really fun. It looks like the event is sold out currently, but you can sign up. You, it looks like you can visit. Yes, yeah, so you should be able to sign up on Disneyland's website, but it's taking place in here, so. Okay, so I actually have no idea what this is, but I just passed by something called the Jammin' Chefs. Uh, take a look at this. Anyways, we might check that out later because I'm really curious. World. Okay, so it looks like they actually are gonna be performing at 10.30, so I'm actually gonna go back there and then finish up my reviews of all of the booths afterwards because I'm super interested.
really cute, but now we're back on track, so I'm gonna go ahead and check out the booths like I keep saying I'm gonna do. Sorry, I'm a, I know I say I'm ADD, but I'm starting to realize I'm a little bit more than I thought I was. Squirrel. All right, so we're gonna check some more out. And now they're actually open, so, <laughs> because I waited too long. Squirrel. Saver Pass is only worth it if you're gonna use it on items that make sense. But what I mean by that is actually this last booth I was just looking at, they have a barbecue brisket slider. Something you should consider is the fact that it's gonna be more expensive than some of the other items. So the more expensive items that you use your Sip and Saver Pass on, the more bang for your buck that you're actually getting. So I highly recommend looking at the price. Really, let's see, if we do the math on it, sorry, I'm gonna pull out my Sip and Saver Pass right now. So if we do the math on it, you get eight little tabs on this, and each tab you can redeem for an item. So let's say $60 divided by eight, right? So theoretically, you should be spending probably about $750 or more per item to even break even on this. So I highly recommend looking at the item. If it's above $7.50, you are actually getting a deal. If it's below, it's probably not worth using this for. <laughs> garden grill which I highly recommend when there are festivals going on they specialize their menu catering specifically to whatever festival is going on and they usually have the best stuff so let's see what they've got going on over here looks like not gonna lie that buffalo mac and cheese looks pretty good I know you can't really see a ton of it right here but they do have quite a bit of options if you're looking for seating, I know a lot of the booths, they have those like high top tables that you can sit at, which are fine, but if you don't want to stand, if you're wanting to sit down, I recommend, I recommend heading over to the Paradise Garden Grill because there are tons of open seating. Usually, especially this early in the morning, there's hardly anyone here. Feel free to camp out, find a good spot in the shade, and it's a lot more enjoyable, I think, if you can just sit down and relax sometimes. Okay, so before I forget, I do not want to forget to tell you guys this. They kind of messed this up with Lunar New Year. You see the line behind me? It is ridiculously long. Something that a lot of people don't take into consideration is that you can actually order food from any booth at one booth. So I highly recommend going to a booth that you think has a low line and then ordering food for one of the more popular booths. Go over there and just pick up your order. It's great. There's some festival specific merch around here. All food specific, wine specific. Through this little booklet for the food and wine festival and I'm noticing things that I've never noticed before. Like the index has things like what is kid friendly and what is yeah, what's vegetarian, what's plant-based, gluten-friendly. It even lists out the name of the booths and what exactly the item is. So if you don't wanna walk all the way around, that's a good option for you. Just pick one of these up. If you don't get the Sip and Saver Pass, you can pick one of these up at any of the little kiosks that have the, the list of all of the locations. So I think we've pretty well covered everything there is to do here for the festival. Obviously there's little things here and there that I'll probably find out throughout the rest of the day. Um, one of the big things that I wanted to point out was just that when you go to booths that are not food and wine festival specific, 
sometimes they will have an item or two that might be specific to the Food and Wine Festival, so keep your eye out for that one. I did notice that the cappuccino cart over here has a horchata um, cold brew, which a lot of people have recommended to me, so I might go try that one later. But for now, I'm just gonna enjoy the rest of the day and try some of my favorite foods. Like I said, I probably won't be using this all day long. I'll probably just use a couple here and there and then just save it for the next time I'm in. With that, I'm gonna go enjoy it.